to stay posted. I don't think anybody spotted me, but what is confusing is there's a green. The light is green ahead. See that? Where are we stopping? All right, we're moving again. Here's the North Platte River. It went, there's a, a reservoir south of here. What a difference it makes. There's like nothing left of that river down in Wendover Canyon. Look at it here. Big old fat river. Looks like it'll be fun for rafting, tubing, all that stuff. I've been wondering about this Alliance to Portland train and which route it takes to get up there. And we're gonna see now if the train is gonna go through the coal mine district or if it's just gonna stay on the lame front range subdivision to Casper. So we're gonna find out pretty much ASAP. We're making the right turn. Right, we're taking the, we're going through the coal mine district. Very interesting. In the past, all I'd ever seen go through there was coal. But that's towards Casper. And we're going up north through the coal mine district. This should be interesting. Subdivision, triple main line. There's at times you got four main lines on this. It's all coal, except for this. I don't think they run a lot of anything else but coal. And going further up, if it's still light, I'll point out the mines. There's a lot of mines. This side, this side of the train is branching off. And this train is gonna go right through. It's not gonna stop at all, I'm hoping. But three main lines. Shouldn't be any need to F around. It's a major hassle if you ride in here on a coal train. And I mean, you can go through, but you gotta get two coal trains to make it through. This is the only train that goes straight through as far as I know. Look at this, just wide open here. As you can see, one blade is taking up two flat cars, 
here. And that thing there, that thing moves so that it, when they go around curves, that'll swing back and forth so this can go around curves. That thing right there. This is Billings. Nice old depot there. It's about 300 something miles to Missoula. Take some inventory here. Let's see, I think I got eight beers left. One, two, three, uh, there's that nine. One, two, three. Eight beers. And then I've got this peach arena thing too. So that should be sufficient to make it to Missoula open. Uh, there we go. I'm going to start heading up into the mountains pretty soon. We're going to get some decent views. No need for a stop here. If you've ever seen the movie A River Runs Through It with Brad Pitt and some other guys, that's in this town. It's supposed to be Livingston, Montana. It's the movie where Brad Pitt gets murdered. Oh, there's the cops, but they're not looking for me. The Oak Depot. The Northern Pacific Depots, they got those yin yang symbols on them. Which is interesting. It's going through town here. The weather coming in. I'm not honestly prepared for a big rainstorm if the train stops. We're through town. I've been pulled off here. Well, they tried to pull me off here a few years back. They didn't succeed. But I don't know. I hope we're just gonna keep going. I don't know if you can see that rain. There's rain coming down. I don't want to deal with that right now. If we can just maintain this speed up the pass, it should be fine. South of here, you can't tell because of this storm. That's Yellowstone. It's about 60 miles south to the north entrance at Gardner, Montana. You can't tell. There's big snow-capped peaks all around here. I'm really hoping that this weather is just in this area. I don't have what it takes to make it another 200 miles if it doesn't, you know, if we go slow and it's getting me wet. So far I'm dry, but it's coming down. But not good. We're stopped. I mean, when you see mountains like this and it's April, you know, I don't think this is anything that's going to be lethal, but uh, this is not good. I, as long as the train moves, and be, well, let's be very glad that this is a train with priority. It'll move. At least the beer won't get warm. We're stopped here on Bozeman Pass. So, I hope it doesn't get wet. I mean, as long as it's this consistency, you know, it won't soak into my bag too much. But in this silly green train pass, looks like the weather is not 
obscenely out of control. We gotta get moving. It's clearing up, I'm hoping. Precipitation coming down, now that we're moving, it's not a big deal. You can't count on summer style weather in Montana until about mid-June. It's about 50-50 chance these days, April. To the top of the pass here. Top of the pass here. All of a sudden, it's back to winter. Look at that. It's winter up here at the top of Bozeman Pass. The good news is the beer is cold. The bad news is I'm cold as well. Coming down off Bozeman Pass into Bozeman, Montana. It's getting cold. As long as we can go fast, it won't be an issue. here and it takes a very roundabout route up to Great Falls, Montana and then it starts going southeast from there. But this is where it basically starts up here. We're about 30 miles west of Bozeman, Montana. Not navigable at this point. I don't, you know, I don't think it's navigable for a really long distance basically towards Minneapolis. But this is where it starts. This is what it looks like. Big scenery in Montana. Look at this. This is the Missouri River. Basically the headwaters just about right here. seen it. You know, I thought about getting off the train here and it's just, it's freezing over here. It's freezing cold. I'm just going to stay on. If I'm fortunate, I could be at the Northern Command Post tonight. It's about 7 p.m. and the train ought to make Missoula by midnight. Hopefully, I can get a ride and be warm in about six hours hopefully. That was the slow, fastest crew change. It was under a minute for the new crew to get on and get us going. I'm gonna come back to Helena and hang out here maybe over the summer. It's just, it's too 
too cold to think about anything else. Get back to the Northern Command Post, get warm. Would have been cool to hang out. This is one of the steepest railroad passes there is in the U.S. Going over the Continental Divide. You know, we don't have a lot of cars and we got two engines. This is the speed we're going. Because this grade, it's like a three, it may even make a 4% grade. And as we get closer to the top, you'll see it gets pretty interesting. Look at this, we got a train in front. That's the back of the train. And then you can see the front there, so there's a big, a big old horseshoe curve coming up. See it going around that curve, there's the back. There's the front. We're gonna be hitting that horseshoe curve as well here in a bit. It's one of, of several pretty decent horseshoe curves on here. Unfortunately, I'm so far close to the engine, it's not really safe to just get the full shot. Now there's the track up there, the same track as this. I don't think this train is long enough so you can totally see what the deal is with this next virtue curve. So there's the track down there. If you got a long train, you can watch your own train go in the opposite direction down there. And here's some ghost town. What the hell's going on there? to come to a stop here in the Missoula yard. I gotta tell you, it's good that it's dark. Pointing out again, the depot. Look at those yin yangs. That's only on this railroad, the Great Northern. I'm sorry, the Northern Pacific. Nowhere else. All right. Coming to a stop in the Missoula yard. Time to get off. I'll say again, this is good that it's dark because this is impossible to escape in the daytime. 
Stub the hobo, I'm getting off. I am off the property. Successful arrival in Missoula, Montana in the darkest hours of the night. So this concludes Missoula to Miami and back. Two months ago on February 14th, I left basically right here. This is the pedestrian overpass over the yard in Missoula. And I went as far east as Miami. That's almost as far as you could get. It's as far as you could get on a train. Obviously, you could get to Key West if you were just driving. But And I returned on pretty much a different route. It's not a joke what happened. This was a mega length trip. And uh, I, I need a break. I'm fried. So the trip is over. Signing off. Stoke the hobo. Until the next trip. Out.